Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Lauren and I am a machine embroidery artist. I run Lashley Creations and today I am switching up my video format. Instead of doing the normal embroidery tutorials, I'm doing a market vlog to show my experience as I prepare to be a vendor this weekend in San Francisco at Treasure Fest. So I've done several shows over the past year, usually just small local shows in Central California, but this is the first time I will be traveling overnight. So I'll be spending three nights in San Francisco for a two-day show. First time traveling, which is big, but also this is the probably biggest attendance-wise and also the most expensive show I've signed up for. So I'm very nervous and I hope this video helps just inform what it's like being a vendor at Treasure Fest, but also showing what it's like selling machine embroidery at a craft fair. So yeah, let's talk prep. So I signed up for this show end of July, which gave me about a month to get everything prepared. So I have been very diligent in making sure I have enough product. So in terms of the type of product I'm bringing, I pretty much have four categories. I have wall art, which is in various sizes, you know, small, medium, large, tote bags, sweaters, and iron-on patches. That's pretty much all of my inventory. For pictures, for example, usually when I do my small local shows, I only bring one of each item because they are pretty time consuming to make. But this time I did make sure to make three of each picture, except for my two largest ones that I haven't sold yet. This past month, I have been making sure every week to get a couple pictures done so I'm not scrambling at the last minute. Did finish up everything ahead of time, so that's good. So I have a lot of pictures here. So my cheapest ones are $30, these tiny ones here. And then my largest one would be 100, 130. This man and woman I made, which are old historical. Originally it's old historical art that I uploaded and digitized, but I only brought one of these big ones because I haven't sold them yet. And they're kind of just showstoppers. I like to put them in the front of my display and they bring people in. Then we made, you know, tote bags and sweaters. So with the sweaters, I'm actually really excited because I actually love doing sweaters. But where I am in Central California, you know, it starts getting really hot around the end of May and no one wants to buy a sweater when it's 100 degrees outside. So San Francisco always can count on it being chilly. So I do plan on selling a lot of sweaters. So we'll see how those go. For two days with tax, the booth the was about 360, 367. So for a show in San Francisco for two days, definitely not too bad. I know Renegade SF, which is two days is 800, which I do want to do, but $800 is very scary. So I think Treasure Fest will be a good gauge for me to see how the audience is in San Francisco and if I should invest in doing more shows. I'm also doing the Hate Street Ashbury Fair in September and Head West Hayes in October. So we'll see how these shows go. In Central California, small town, I do done a couple shows and I've done okay at them. They're relatively affordable between 50 and $70. And I usually make two or three times my booth fee. A few times I barely made my booth fee back. Uh, and I think that's just because my art style is very unique and niche. Today's Thursday, the event is Saturday and Sunday driving up to SF tomorrow morning, Friday. And at this point, I have all of my stuff done. I don't have to make anything, which is nice. Everything is pretty much packed. The only thing I'm worried about is my display. My display is pretty hefty. I spent this weekend kind of testing out the layout, making sure everything can fit in the truck we're bringing. It's a lot of wood panels, which look very nice when they are set up, but hauling it around and packing it it's very annoying. So we made sure to get the car packed up Thursday evening. So that way we can just leave Friday. And as you can see, everything fits into the car just barely. And hopefully it makes it safely to San Francisco. So we arrived in San Francisco Friday afternoon. All of the stuff made it okay, safe and sound in one piece. Nothing flew out of the back of the truck like I feared. Then on Saturday morning, we arrived at Treasure Island at around 7.30 a.m. Even though the show didn't start until 11, 
We had to be set up before 10. They wanted to make sure all the cars were unloaded and everyone was ready to go. The weather was very cloudy, a little wet, but the forecast said it would be a nice sunny day, 70 degrees, so I wasn't worried about anything. And then it only took maybe 30 minutes to get all the big stuff set up, my tables and organize my wood panels the way I wanted to. And, and so far things were good, but then it started raining. At first it was just a little drizzle, so I covered my table while I finished setting everything else up. But then after a few minutes, it started pouring. We waited for a little bit. Didn't look like the rain was going to stop, so then we kind of gave in and put up our tent. Of course, after, you know, 10, 15 minutes of putting the tent up, the rain stopped. But at this point, I didn't want to chance it and take the tent down. So I decided to just leave the tent up because, you know, San Francisco weather can be unpredictable. So we just left it up and pushed out the wood panels to give my booth a little bit more room. And then by the time 11 rolled around, the event started and the weather was perfect. It actually ended up being a little too warm for me, even though the high was only 70 degrees. I'm glad I decided to keep my tent up because it provided the perfect amount of shade. So the crowd turnout was actually pretty good. As you can see, the streets were filled with vendors and many people came out. So this street here, the way that Treasure Fest was set up, it was about three, maybe four blocks of a street road. So I unfortunately was at the very end of one of the streets. And I think that was a little bit of a disadvantage because this was a really long street. And I walked down it and I could just see as an attendee, it was very tiring and that may have prevented me getting more sales than I could have. People didn't want to walk all the way down because then they had to turn around and go all the way back. They did have these big dog statues towards the end, which encouraged people to walk down and take pictures. So that was at least good. And this event specifically was advertised as the Dog Days of Summer. They had several like doggy themed events, doggy treats and vendors, a doggy runway show. So there were so many cute dogs dressed up. I actually brought my own bag of dog treats so I could feed all the little dogs that came by and they were so cute. Shop to the owners. One thing I forgot when I had signed up for this event was that it is not free for the people who want to come, the customers. They charge an early bird fee if you bought your tickets ahead of time online, it was $10. And then if you showed up the day of, it was $20. And that could have deterred people, one, from coming and two, from buying stuff because they're already paying money to get in. And then you have food and drinks for expensive. So on the second day when we started, the weather was great. We had no rain in the morning. It was hotter than the previous day. And again, we had a good crowd. The one thing I did notice is with the people, they would kind of just walk without stopping and looking, not only at my stall, but at other vendors too. They were more of a just walk around and enjoy the scenery versus stopping and shopping. With the other vendors that were there, there were a lot of vintage vendors. So you use clothing, some selling old antique, like a lot of old pictures or just house items. And I did notice those vendors, their booths were a lot more busy at all times versus the booths like mine who did handmade art. So the booths across from me, they had also done stickers, like a lot of cheap stickers, they were like $4, between $4 and $10 for a bunch of stickers, and they were really busy. The stand next to me, they had a big booth selling a bunch of vintage old pictures. They were packed, lots of people looking through their stuff, but myself and the other handmade artists, slow sales. Overall, the event was very fun. I did enjoy my time, but when I looked at my sales at the end of the day on Sunday for the total two days, Saturday and Sunday, I had done about four times my booth fee, which by itself is great, more than I've ever done from my previous shows. But when I take into account paying for the hotel and gas, it makes it not worth it in my opinion. If I were living here in San Francisco, or if I were able to stay with friends or family and have no additional cost of the hotel, then I think it would have been worth it. But looking back, I do not think I will do this event again. I don't regret attending the event. I think it was a great experience. 
I did have a lot of people stop and they loved my artwork. And a lot of people took my business card. I grew my Instagram followers by a few, so that was nice, but just not as good as I would have hoped. But like I said, I did enjoy my time and I don't think it was a complete waste for me coming because I was planning on treating this as a vacation anyways. I'm always in San Francisco at least every other month on vacation. So actually coming here and the profit I did make, it kind of did cancel out what I paid, you know, for my accommodation and gas and food and everything. So I kind of look at it as I got a free vacation, which is nice. If I were having the same event in somewhere like LA, which I do not like LA, and I made this much in sales, I would be a lot more disappointed. But because it is San Francisco, I still got to enjoy the day before and the day after the event. I had fun, so in my mind, it was worth it. So stay tuned for my next video where I talk about Hate Street Ashbury Festival and hopefully that does go better.